you. The reason why folks go back to the powwow, the reason why folks go back to drinking, the reason why folks go back to smoking marijuana, the reason why folks go back, amen, is because they never get the seed germinated in their soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. The thief. He said, but if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. Yes. He shall give all the substance of his house. Why should the devil have your furniture? Why should the devil be decorating his house with the war order? Come on, somebody, of what belongs to you. Why should the devil decorate his house saying, I got sister so-and-so's joy and peace. Here it is. I got so-and-so's healing. I healed them of cancer. I delivered them and set them free. But I stole it from them. And here it is. I hear so-and-so's deliverance. Is anybody in the house right now that used to be delivered? But I stole their deliverance. And here it is in my war chest. Somebody lift up your hands. Some of you got to get engaged here tonight in the power of the Holy Ghost. You just sit there, not entering into the presence of God. This church is in a dire need of revival. I'm going to tell you that. I can tell that after preaching a few nights. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Dire need. That wants to send the revival. A double portion. But when you catch the thief, it's time to take back what belongs to you. But unless you understand what belongs to you and what you can rightfully have, the devil's going to quit. He's going to keep playing tricks on your mind. He, he don't have a right to take your healing. He don't have a right to take your wealth. But when you don't return your tithe, Amen. according to Matthew Malachi, he said, where do we rob thee? He said, you brought me in tithes and offerings. He said, he said, well, you're cursed with a curse. He said, but if you'll bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse, he said, he said, that there may be meat in my house. He said, I'd open the windows of heaven. And he said, I would pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain. I want you to know at Calvary, he nailed my sickness to the cross. I want you to know we need a revelation of the cross. We need a revelation of the almighty God in Christ. We need a revelation of who Jesus is. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the lily of the valley. He's the only bread of God. He's the only door that leads to heaven. He's the only way. He's the only truth. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. But if you get a hold of it. Hallelujah. But see, we just let the devil come in and steal our stuff. Now, now look at Proverbs 6 and 30. Let's, let's take a look at this. Restoration, and the term restoration, is described both to the actual event of which the monarchy was restored. Restored power. Acts 1 and 6. The disciples asked Jesus and said, when are you going to restore the kingdom power? When are you going to restore it? Now the kingdom wasn't an earthly monarch kingdom. The kingdom was to be set up in our heart through the new birth when you receive the Holy Ghost, speaking other tongues, Amen. come on somebody. Amen. And you repent of your sins and you give your life to Jesus Christ and He fills you, amen, with the Spirit and you're crying out the Father. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Tell it. Yes, hallelujah. Notice what the Scripture 
scripture said. Men do not despise a thief. And here it's talking about somebody that's really hungry. And if he's still a satisfied soul when he's hungry. But if he be found. He shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all of the substance of his house. But whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. And he that doeth it to destroy his own soul. John, I need I need total, I need everybody's focus tonight. I don't want anybody moving up and down because God sent me here with a prophetic word and I've got to give it back. It's payback time. But there are many individuals that think they can live in sin, fornication, and adultery and still obtain the blessing. And you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? One of the things that he wants to do in this meeting is restore families. He wants to bring a restoration. It's payback time for everything the devil took your marriage, took your husband, took your wife. My Bible said that David recovered it all one time the enemy came in. Amen. Stole his wife, stole his children, stole his silver, stole his gold. Sold the precious things, amen, that meant a lot to his heart. And you know what? He could have fell down and bawled and squalled and said, It's over with. They're going to rape my children. They're going to rape my wife. They're going to take what rightly belongs to me, the precious things of life. But I want you to know he mounted up his horse and he went after the enemy. And he went into the enemy's camp. And he got back everything that belonged to him. Because he said, devil, you're not getting my wife. You're not getting my son. You can't have him to drugs. You can't have him to satanic idol worship. My God, I wish somebody would get in the Holy Ghost tonight. I wish somebody would engage in the spirit tonight. Hallelujah. They ain't drinking at the same time. There's an adulterous spirit been running around in the ground up in here. I'm gonna prophesy to you now. Go ahead. And there was somebody here last night God told me don't say nothing to. But if that person wanted to catch the feet and be found out, God said he could even heal that relationship. Because it's been God's plan throughout the whole word of God to restore. Yes. Oh, God. And to replenish. Yes. And to reconcile. The Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. The Son of God had a beginning. He had a beginning in Bethlehem. There wasn't no divine son. But Jehovah himself foresaw himself in prophecy. In Genesis 3.15. That one day through a virgin birth, God himself, Emmanuel, would take upon himself the form of a servant and the form of a man. And he'd come to crush the head of the serpent. He'd get in this earth ring. I wish somebody would help me. The serpent possessed, talked to Eve. She gave up her, she gave up her contract. She gave up her covenant rights. She gave up, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, Go dominion and power. She gave up fellowship with God. She gave up to the thief that came in. An illegal alien didn't have the papers to be in the garden. But somehow or another, Adam just let the devil come in there. He should have got that thief that rang its neck and said, Listen here, you don't belong up in here. This is my house. This is my home. But God gave me dominion and power and authority to be ruling and reigning. And he gave it away. And you know what? I'm in the Holy Ghost. Go to Ruth. Go to Ruth. 
You see the plan of God and the types and the shadows. The types and the shadows of redemption plan. God's plan of restoring, reconciling lost, dying humanity on its way to hell. When you think about it, what a cell phone costs six, seven hundred dollars. When you think about going to get a meal, and I found out in Canada it costs a lot of money to go out to eat. <laughs> you might as well, amen, even if me and my wife sharing a meal like we have since we've been here is 35 bucks. Economic crisis globally around the world has caused the seed thief to come into people's mentality to tell them, don't return your tithe, don't give your offering, because you know you got bills, you got circumstances, you better put God. Somewhere else. But it's it's amazing to me the the money young people can come up with when they want what they want, a hundred and fifty dollar pair of Nikes. Yes. And when it comes up to iPads and, and iPhones and it comes up to the internet uh, uh, laptops and all the gadgets. It seems as though we got money for everything we want to spend on ourselves. So, it's amazing people, the money they'll pay for jewelry. $5,000 watch, $250 watch. Young people now for their jeans are paying $150 to $175 for a pair of jeans to wear. Some of them paying four hundred dollars. Oh. But yet, when we go to church, it's kind of like the twenty dollar bill, the five dollar bill, the one dollar bill, and they were all on a conveyor and they just made money. And the twenty dollar bill said to the five dollar bill, "Where you been?" He said, "Well, I've been to Seven Eleven, and I've been uh, to uh, 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 to the dollar." and here and there. Same thing with the dollar. Said, you know, uh, the $20, the $1 said to the $20, where you been? Well, I've been to the casino and I bought the lottery tickets and I got my beer. Said to the $1 bill, where you been? Said, we've been to church. <laughs> How many ever got a check in the mail and was recompensed because they said you overpaid. I wish somebody would help me. Amen. Amen. How many received restitution when it came payday? I want to tell you it's payday for the devil right now. It's not just payday for the devil when he's thrown into the lake of fire or when he bound a thousand years. It's payday right now. And you know who needs to make him pay? Every Holy Ghost Jesus name child of the living God that's been born again. You need to rise up with the power of the Holy Ghost and say it's payday devil. You're the thief and I arrest you in Jesus name. Give it back. Give it back to me. It belongs to me. Give me back my husband. 
But the 15th verse, Boaz in verse 13 took Ruth. She was his wife. Boaz in the Hebrew means a pillar in the temple of my God. We need some pillars here tonight to rally behind the vision of Bishop Van Johnson, First Lady, and glory of the prophetess. We need some people to rally behind Brother Fabian and other ministers that are reaching out into this reserve. It's not that people don't got money. It's that people waste yes. and lose Tell it. the greatest investment that Mary Magdalene ever made when she got the alabaster box. If you study that out, the anointment of that oil was given and the recipe to the Levitical priesthood, it was given to Moses as a pattern of things, and the recipe was the recipe of an apothecary to anoint a king, a prophet, and a priest. So she had a revelation that Jesus was the Almighty God. She had a revelation that he was king of kings and lord of lords. She had a revelation uh, that if she touched uh, him uh, and anointed him, she had a revelation of the cross. She had a revelation that he was going to be made of cast. She had a revelation that, she, that Jesus was going to be our substitutionary sacrifice. Uh, a lamb without blemish and without spot to die and shed perfect blood to save us. She was anointing his body as we say in Spanish, the Via de la Rosa Road, the road of suffering. So that every time they whipped him, they could smell the fragrance of the true King of Kings and the true Lord of Lords. And the very Creator became my Redeemer, the Father Himself incarnated, the mighty God. Jesus. Had become my Redeemer. But let me tell you something. It was 300 pence. 300 pence was a year's wages that she got from prostituting her body and becoming a woman of the night of a life of promiscuity and sexual perversion. But where did she get the oil from? She could have only got it from a priest. Oh. And you probably ever never heard that preached. Never. It's the only place she could have got it from. Oh. Because he's the only one that could hold that oil. He's the only know. one. He was the only one that could make that oil. He was the only one that had the recipe to that oil. And that man of God wasted his sight on righteous, ungodly living. But she said, I found a man that could love me with the almighty love of God. Pure love, holy love. A love that restores. A love that doesn't uh, not, not out of fear but out of love, this restorational revival came into Mary Magdalene while others feared and ran. She was at the foot of Calvary. She was at the empty tomb. I wish somebody would slip your hand up right now. I'm preaching this payback time. I'm preaching this payback time. Somebody, somebody, I can't hear you. It's tongue talking time. It's tongue talking time. Those of you that are watching by internet, those of you that are listening to this message in the days to come, I'm telling you the dry spell's over. I'm telling you the drought is over. I'm telling you the famine is over. I'm telling you it's time to catch the feet and make them pay back sevenfold. I'm telling you restorational joy is coming back to the church. The church has been distressed. The church
church has been perplexed. The church, amen, has been under financial disarray and dismay. The church has been about God under. It seemed like, amen, the gifts of the Spirit and the apostles and the prophets and the desire for revival is not in void. But I've caught the thief tonight and I'm telling him he owns a Pentecostal church. The true Jesus name, people, revival is coming back to our lives with restoration of power. You know the worst thing to do, brethren, Everybody here wake? Yep. Is to become a professional. Amen. I can spot a professional and smell them out a million miles and no longer have the anointing and the touch of God in my life. Tell them. Professional Pentecostals. Professional put my hands up. Professional sing and lift our hands. Professional going through the motions. Tell them. God said to Ruth, lost her husband during the famine. Naomi left full and she came back empty. Look at verse chapter 2 and verse 12. The Lord recompensed thy work and a full reward be given to thee of the Lord God of Israel whose wings thou art I'm not trusted in chariots. I'm not trusted in Mr. Obama. I'm not trusted, amen, in the Republican and the Democrat political system of a democracy of man. I'm trusted in Jesus. I'm trusted in Jesus. I said I trust Jesus. He is my God. He is my King. I will boldly say the Lord is my helper. Amen. You can't just take what somebody else has and repeat it and copy it. You've got to have it for yourself. Oh, glory. Everybody in America trying to copy Benny Hinn. Wave their hand. Lord. Everybody's sick and tired of TBN Hollywood Christianity. They oh, have it up to here. And I'm not speaking against any man or any individual. But I'm telling you, God is about ready to recompense with full reward and payback to the faithful Amen. like Elder Van Johnson and yes. Sister Johnson that have paved the way. You know, anybody could have quit. That's right. But the man's having dialysis and still shows up to church every night. Yeah. Anybody could have quit you folks if they were a hireling and left this church and went somewhere else and retired somewhere. I wish somebody, but there's a desire in the man. There's a hunger in the man. Hallelujah, though the body may be intact. But there's still oil in the man. There's still prophetic oil. There's still prophecy. There's still tongues and interpretation of tongues. There's still the Jesus name message and work of God. He kind of will see kind of. He kind of will say. He said, I'm going to give you full reward. I'm going to give you full recompense. Touch somebody and tell them it's payback time. I'm getting it back. I'm taking it back. I'm getting it back. I'm taking it back. It's payback time. I'm getting my full reward back. Hallelujah. I know those reward programs at superstores. Hey, man, I know Walmart has them. These different companies have them. Am I all right here tonight? Oh, yes. Go there and exit. 22nd chapter. Uh, do you have a Bible? Huh? It's good to have it on your phone, but bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. 
Everybody's bringing my iPads down off the wall and everything else. I still believe in the written pages of the Word of God. Oh, God! Because I wanted you to read a verse for me. Can you do that up here? Yes. Look up Exodus 22. I want to get to the heart of the matter tonight. Restoration. You know what that means? To return of something to the former owner. To the former owner. To the former owner. To return something to the root. See, in Africa, when people repent, surrender their lives to Jesus Christ, their heart receives the Holy Ghost. Speak in tongue. Obey the Lord and His command to water baptism in Jesus' name. At the end of the service or at the end of the revival, they will bring and you will see bicycles on the platform. You will receive refrigerators and radios. You'll see all types of paraphernalia. And everybody says, what is that? So the thief has gotten saved and returned the right that belongs to somebody and they get up there and announce, whoever this belongs to, come up here and get it. Wow, somebody help me right now. It's talking about restitution. There's some of you that need to sow tonight that's payback time seed Amen. of a restitution recompense. Amen. Restorational seed. And God has spoken to me tonight. Last night I didn't receive an offer. You were here. I can't do it unless God speaks to my heart. Tell him. I want you to just lift up your hand. Now, this young lady's back. You were here last night. You've changed positions. Last night you were sitting where she was. There was another young lady sitting next to you. I could tell you things. She said, and this, that, and the other. But you came back. You're here. And God said there's a hunger He's creating in your spirit. And things are going to begin to turn for you. When you run completely after Him, Tell him. where there is no double-mindedness whatsoever, but that you are totally 100% His root. Tell him. God has His bow out. God has his plan for you. And many of the plans of men, many of the plans that others would have for us, many influences will come into our lives that are sent by Satan as distractions to the cross. But if you're going to be his, you've got to pick up your cross. Yes. And this contrary that's on the inside of you of the wrestling match between the spirit and the flesh and the flesh and the spirit. It is up to you who will win the match. Tonight you won the battle because you came back and you made up your mind. Nothing's keeping me from that meeting. And God said, hey man, you needed to hear something from him because you asked him. And now here I am in front of you to tell you, hey man, that the wrestling match is going to be over. For God is going to pin your enemy that has rose up against you and fought you. And although you can't see it with your naked eye, God is about ready to put it down. And you're going to rise up as the victor and the conqueror because it's God before you who can be against you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He is going to fill you with his glory. He is going to fill you with his power. And he's going to rise you up to be an Esther, to be a Deborah, and to be a Ruth. If you will hear his voice and will obey it and totally surrender your life to him in the coming day. You will come to know the Savior more deeply and more in love with him. <laughs> 